from the basement of La Penta. This is WICR. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Sports Ball. I'm your host with the most Jersey Joe. And one more quick segment had to get in there. Talked a lot about Chip Kelly and the eat and the move with LaShawn McCoy. Now it's time to talk some Kentucky basketball. Last night, if you watched the game, Kentucky, it was a real battle. It really was. I mean, they pulled away a 72-64 to victory over Georgia. And, I mean, look, Kentucky is not perfect but if you just watch Kentucky in the last five minutes of every game they played this year, you just understand why no one is close to them. I mean, in terms of their the way they can physically dominate and outmatch you and defend. I mean, in the last five minutes of games, there's not a better team in the nation. There's not a better team in the country as it is, but just in terms of playing in the in the crunch time, in the minutes that matter, in the key phases of a game, there's nobody who executes better than Kentucky. And it's just a lot of it, it just has to do with their athleticism and their size. I mean, we, we've heard it time and time again. The only team in the NBA who is tall has, has a better collective size than they do is the Portland Trailblazers. And it's just amazing. When you watch big rebounds at the end of games, it's almost as if other teams don't even have a chance. I mean, you have Cauley Stein and, Ta- and all these guys. There's just so much athleticism. They physically outmatch everyone, and that was again evident in this game. I mean, they stopped they Georgia. They stopped Georgia from scoring for like the last four minutes of the game. It was incredible. They just present problems that can't be accounted for. They just can't. There's a lot of good teams out there, but I think the only one who could possibly challenge Kentucky is Wisconsin, and that's merely for the fact because of their size. But, I mean, size is just so important for this team because the physically they're at a different level. They, these guys just, they're not going to let you get the rebound on them. It doesn't matter if it's an offensive rebound for them or if you miss a shot. They are getting the rebound, and I've just seen it time and time again. At first, I wasn't 100% on board with Kentucky only because I have seen them struggle for stretches against some of these SEC teams who aren't very good. But, I mean, you just watch the way that they've dominated in the most important phases, and you just have seen time and time again why nobody, I think. I haven't been this sold on a basketball team since the last time the Kentucky Wildcats won the national championship with Anthony Davis and Michael Kidd-Gilchrist and all of those transcendent players in college basketball. And right now, I just feel like this team is in that similar situation now. They're not, maybe not as supremely talented. Like, that team had guys who you could just go to, just give them the ball in that spot. I don't know if this Kentucky team has a definitive player who you give him the ball if it's a very crunch time situation. I think right now they have been the best team in crunch time, but it's just been a collective effort. But the Harrison Twins have really stepped up their game in the in the key phases. We even saw it in the tournament last year, the Harrison Twins really stepping their game up when it mattered most. And they've certainly continued to do that. But I just think when you look at Kentucky, I mean, I'll tell you right now, I mean, we're not filling out our brackets till the 15th, but I, I everyone always fills out a couple. But I, I just think I haven't felt this good about the number one seed who will beat Kentucky, who, let's be honest, they play Florida again. They'll beat Florida. They'll go 31-0 and in the regular season. Will they lose a game in the SEC tournament? I don't know. I don't think they will. I just don't think the SEC, it's really a down year for the SEC. Florida is usually the big rival, and they've really not been great this year. So I do think they will escape that, that SEC tournament without an, a loss, but this team is just showing you. I mean, I, I've just said one of the things that's really impressed me is I really think you could go up and down the top 25 to 30 teams in college basketball and just really pick out one big identifiable weakness that jumps right at you about almost every team. But I don't think I see that with Kentucky. The only thing I've seen from them is they do struggle for stretches, but in the key phases, in the last five minutes, they can't be stopped. They can't be out-rebounded. They're physically stronger and taller than everyone else. And when they play, and they play such good defense, 
their offense is just kind of comes from how tightly they play on that defensive end. And that's something you've really got to like because even for a team like Virginia, who's probably the only one who kind of can rival them in terms of how well they play defense, Virginia plays with a snail pace on offense. That is going to be the thing that, that keeps them away from making from really winning it all this year. They play with a snail pace. It's just way too slow. They jump out and they get these nice 10-point uh, leads, but the thing when you look at it is the other team, they eventually they cut it up so much because they're so slow on offense that that lead doesn't build that significantly. Kentucky, when they're just on top of it all, there's just nobody better, and I think we all kind of understand that, but it's just amazing because I, I thought about this last night. If you only watch Kentucky in the last five minutes of every game they played this year, you would have know everything you needed to know about Kentucky and why they are just far and above everyone else, why they present unique problems that no one else can counter. But that is going to do the, it for this segment. We'll be back in the day later for Soccer Showdown. Thank you for staying with me, and everyone enjoy having a great day.